destroying my snap pads. Don't you hate the shake? And it's worse back here. That's right, as our veers, we don't like our house to shake. We want it to be nice and solid. Even with the six-way hydraulic leveling system that we have, that a lot of big rigs have, you still get some shake, especially when you have guests or somebody in the back. We have a large toy hauler, there's a garage back there, and when somebody's on that bed in the back and moving around, it shakes the whole RV. So one of the complaints we've heard from RVers is when they're at a campground is that when people are walking through the trailer or if it was a, a brand or a model that had a washer dryer, the washing machine was on the spin cycle or kids running through or big dogs, what we hear is people complaining about that unwanted movement. Um, it's not uncommon to hear someone say, well, who's the elephant in the trailer? Can you please walk quieter? Well, we have a solution for that. We are actually the very first ones to get the Moride X-Brace fifth wheel stabilizing system on a hydraulic leveling RV with RV snap pads. So it's the first time this has been done. We are testing it out here to show you what it is, but we're not gonna stop with that. We actually have the hitch mount fifth wheel stabilizing system in the back. So we actually have a toy hauler with a hitch mount, which is rare. So we're gonna deploy that one as well. Now I never had a tripod system under my kingpin. Uh, it's big and bulky and I, I was never interested in that. Uh, and this, for those of you that want that, uh, or want that stability, just watch what happens when I deploy these. So once these have been installed, they stay on, and uh, as long as you have the pins pulled, uh, it's safe to travel this way. So these are really easy to get set up. Basically, there's a yellow line right here, and you're just gonna line up whatever holes on either one of these. Uh, like, oh, I got one right here that lines up. We're gonna put that pin in there, Find it on the other one here. There we go. And you're not going to use any tools with this. It's hand tightened only. So now they're locked out. We're going to turn it together just to, you know, get, get it somewhat tight. Like there, not too tight. And I'll do this one. And there we go. That adds a lot more stability and we'll do that shake test again. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do the back one, deploy both of them. Now the X-Brace hitch mount fifth wheel stabilizer is just as easy to deploy back here. We've got also pins up here holding the legs up here. I've been traveling like this for hundreds of miles it rides just fine like this. Again, we're going to line up a hole right here, put the pins back in. That one. And actually, this side's already set, so that's good. And we just have a simple ratchet strap. We're going to snug these two together uh, pretty snug to add a nice stabilizing two arms right here. That's pretty snug. You don't have to go crazy on it. Let's do that shake test again. So much more solid, but the real difference will be in the back. Let's check that out. 
I can feel the difference just coming up the stairs. Look at the difference here. Almost no shake at all. This is the Moride fifth wheel x brace stabilizing system. Front and back. Nice to feel like you're in a regular house when you're in your RV. Now I know you guys want to see the complete installation of these Moride stabilizing systems. So let's head back to Moride to see that. And if you've decided you want one of these, we do have a discount code we will put down below in the description and the pinned comment. Now we have more installation videos coming up from more rides, so make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're going to be showing you the detailed installation of the legendary Moride independent suspension system and so much more. Now let's head into Moride. Hey everyone, this is Jack, the sales and marketing manager here at Moride. Thanks for having me out here, uh, Jack, and wow. You're blowing my mind with all of these amazing products that you guys have. Uh, so you're going to tell us a little bit about the history of this particular upgrade, yeah. right? So RVing is about two things. It's about the journey and then it's about the destination. With our suspension line, what we want to do is get you there and protect your house on wheels from damaging road track from rough roads and make towing smoother. Once you're there, we want you to enjoy the camping experience as much as possible. Because if you can enjoy the RV, you're going to enjoy the RV lifestyle more. So one of the complaints we've heard from RVers is when they're at a campground is that when people are walking through the trailer or if it was a, a brand or a model that had a washer dryer, the washing machine was on the spin cycle or kids running through or big dogs, what we hear is people complaining about that unwanted movement. Um, it's not uncommon to hear someone say, well, who's the elephant in the trailer? Can you please walk quieter? What happens is, is, especially on travel trailers and fifth wheels, is that you are jacked up, so you have a higher center of gravity because you're leveling. And so we met a few years ago at a Grand Design Rally, a gentleman who for years had provided a solution for it. It was a, a stabilizer. He had a small company called Winfield RV Stabilizers. And basically what it was is a way to provide tension side to side. And so after watching and listening to customers compliment him and talk with him and seeing that over two rallies, we approached him and said, hey, what's your deal? And he was a retired San Diego police officer and just said he was going to rallies, doing installations and doing some things on the internet. So more I approached him about licensing the manufacturing, the marketing. And these are the products we took over. The very first one is for travel trailers. When there are scissor jacks, the challenge is, is they do, all they do is they move up and down. They provide no side to side support. So on a travel trailer or a smaller fifth wheel with scissor jacks, it's especially prone to side to side movement and unwanted movement. And so Winfield's solution was, is to basically make an X out of it. Uses a threaded rod and you use kind of like this, this tire uh, lug, lug nut wrench and you basically can loosen it and tighten it. It's a one time installation it, uh, no modifications, no cutting welding, it just literally bolts in place here. And when you get to the campground, you drop your scissor jacks, you tighten this up. When it's time to go, you just loosen it up and the, the x brace goes up with the scissor jack. So again, one time installation. And the difference is very, very dramatic. On a travel trailer, you can put them on the front, you can put them on the rear, or you can put them on both for maximum improvement. So this was one of the products. The second one was for the front of fifth wheels with electric legs like this. And so again, the same problem was is the side to side movement caused a lot of movement in the leg itself. And so Winfield's solution was let's make an X out of it. And here it's a turnbuckle design, a tube and a tube, and you basically line up holes and it's pushing outward to provide lateral support. What a, it's a great product, great design, and it works really, really well, again, on front electric landing legs. So this is for travel trailers, this is for the front of electric landing leg fifth wheels. After we took over the licensing and the manufacturing, we said, okay, what other holes are there in the marketplace? Well, we noticed a lot of fifth wheels and a few travel trailers actually had rear hitches. Motorhomes have rear hitches. They have the same problem of side to side movement when people are walking through the trailer. So we said, what if we take that same concept and provide side to side support, only do it through a ratchet strap and do it attaching into the hitch receiver. And so this is the rear hitch receiver x brace Again, amazing product. It provides lots and lots of support. It can be stored in the up position or it can be taken out and put in storage. But some people came to us and said, okay, well, what about 
of bike racks. What about cargo? I don't want to take this in and out. So there's an aftermarket solution. More I does not manufacture this, but you can get it on, on, online where you can have a dual hitch receiver. And so now you can store your bike rack here and now the X brace down here and get the maximum improvement from the X brace and get rid of that side to side on one movement. So this whole family is about just trying to make it more comfortable, more stable when you are at the campground. Now there's a new product coming because we were trying to fill holes. So this was travel trailer. This is the front of fifth wheels. This is the rear of anything with the trailer. Well, there's a lot of hydraulic leveling jacks out there, especially on really nice fifth wheels. And so those people said, well, what about us? We have the same problem where we feel that unwanted movement and the, the six point leveling just isn't able to, uh, to cover that. So <coughs> brand new product, as a matter of fact, on Tom's unit is the first prototype. And it takes basically this front design and only puts it onto the hydraulic landing legs. And so we're going to do a test. We'll show you the difference. But it's the same concept of providing a turnbuckle design, providing lateral support, and we're just going to lock that down. What we're going to do on the rear, and this one is still under development, is take this design and put it on the very rear jack. The rear jack on a six-point leveling is right behind the tire, so you have anywhere from 8 to 10 to 12 feet of overhang, and that's a big, giant lever to move that trailer. So the whole line is about helping you be more stable, enjoy that, the camping experience, because we're getting rid of that unwanted side-to-side -side movement. We're having the x brace stabilizer put on, and it's the first time they put it on with RV snap pads on there. So this is gonna be another first to see how this works. They wanted one uh, adapted to work with the hydraulic Style. And the kicker there is you don't have the, they can't connect to the leg tube, you gotta connect to the foot pole. So it's adapting that X brace to work on the hydraulic, round hydraulic. Okay, so alright. This has been around for a couple years. Yeah, because, yeah. Style. Yeah, that's electric there. Yeah, correct, correct. Okay. So just keep making it work with the round hydraulic. So this is the first time trying the X brace with the snap pads, is that right? right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a cool. pretty good, I mean, I think I think I have a good way for it to work. I just, okay. Uh, at least I've tried yet. Great. The snap pads on order, we're gonna do it in a couple of our trailers. Oh, right okay. So we've had the braces themselves on uh, our, our trailers, they take the shows and the salesman that goes. Okay. He's, he's a big fan. Okay. point of the foot plate uses flathead screws. Okay. So you can't, it's very hard to drill an accurate hole from the bottom going through the foot pad first. So right. So try going top down, then you go back and chase it to the bottom. That makes sense. That's the idea anyway. So you should be able to kind of bury it up into that rubber yeah. there. Yeah. So, should, yeah. Hopefully we don't have to drill a very big hole in the bottom and you can just force it through and then sure. it's in, it's in. Okay, cool. That's the plan. Well, uh, I'll be excited to share that with uh, the snap pad folks too. Yeah. So, that's the downside is there'll be a hole in the bottom, but I, I can't imagine that's going to cause any sort of problem. Once you get the pilot, I think we'll be good to okay. do the rest of it once they're up. So the same thing. Last time. We're destroying my snap pad. <laughs> to open up the bottom of the snap pad enough to get that in from underneath. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's got to go in from underneath to go all the way up. So, and that, that definitely shrunk. So I'll bet we'll need probably, we're going to need a big drill bit. Shrunk when we drill through it, so we're going to have to chase it. Oh, okay. It <laughs> okay, that makes sense. 
it feels like that was a five sixteenths bit and the hole only feels like three sixteenths maybe. It really uh, shrunk. I, I guess uh, the snap pads are pretty dense material, yeah, huh? I think so. <laughs> Probably a whole tire in that one snap pad. <laughs> as soon as you can get this pulled in, we're, we're good. However, whatever you need to open it up to get that through there. All the way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. You're gonna need to come through. It should, it, should go, it should go further than that, yeah. It might be getting stuck on that material. All you gotta do is get it, if you get it through enough to catch a thread, there you, you go. Draw it through the rest of the way. Yeah, you're gonna be close. If you see that, I don't think it's gonna catch it. You need a little bit more. Oh. There it went. There it went. Do you have Allen wrenches over here? Opposing bracket, so the one on that side is going to be outward, so it's going to basically be about like that is where it's going to have to be. Is that tightening down right there? Give a shot, yeah, I think it'll work. We can adjust this a little bit. Yep, okay, good deal. Same thing on the other side. Able to get it seated and then you'll be already set to go to tighten it. Yeah, that's probably a way to do that. And basically, you can almost just li try and line it up with uh, the line of bolt holes because that the connection point's directly in line with that set of bolt holes. So you can use it as a target. Uh, okay. It'll be on this side. You want it right there? It's gonna be right here. Yep, just like that. Okay. Yep. Good, good, yep. Opposing thread. Okay. Right, right now, with the pins out, they're unlocked and they can slide within each other. That's what allows you to go up and down without damaging anything. Okay, and sure. The intent here is to lock them out. You have to get get a set of holes lined up. So there's several sets of holes along here. You can see where the tube. The tube doesn't go to there. So you right. can use any one of these holes. So the first one you find that lines up, you can use. It doesn't matter which. There's also okay. a uh, yellow line painted on the inside, so you can see when you're on. You know, like this is the right line. There's just no hole lined up. But this one is. Okay. It doesn't matter which one you use. Just find one that lines up and lock them out. And then, once you get them locked, then you can tighten them. So then once you once you rotate it when they're locked together, it'll start. It'll tighten both sides at the same time. And you just, oh, ro just okay. rotate. Just rotate until your hand tight. There's instructions right here to tell you not to use any tools or anything to tighten it. You okay. Too much, you, can, you can do some damage. Once you get these tight, then 
Wow. The thing you have to remember is if uh, those are deployed and locked out, if you start retracting, it's going to damage that. Those pins have to be removed before any retraction is done. Okay. And then you can hang those pins inside your that, that door where your controls are or something like that. Right. It doesn't have to ride with the pins. For sure. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't have to. You can ride. Um, the pins can be put away and it can ride retracting with them out. It's no big deal. Okay. And then all you do is remove the pins and you can retract and... Awesome. And the pins out, they wow. live like that. It gives you an idea that you're, you're unlocked and ready to go. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that out too. It'd be like rock solid like a house, huh? <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, so you, you get it to whatever makes sense for your terrain, line up a hole, put the pin in, and then you grab the ratchet strap on there and pull it tight. Yeah, so you just put it together and pull that, and then just enough to where you get some, some pressure on the back up and okay, nice. Yeah, I'm excited to be able to use that receiver. It used to hold a rack for kayaks, but we stopped carrying the kayaks, so this is going to be cool. Okay, yeah. great. Well, thanks, Mike. No Appreciate it. When you're ready to go, it's just as easy as releasing the ratchet strap. Taking that off, you're just going to put that in storage, lift these arms up, pull that pin, drop that one back down, line up the pins, and there we go. Ready for travel on the back. Let's go to the front. And the front is easy as well. Just loosen this back up a little bit. There we go. So the pins pop right out. And those go in storage as well. And these are fine to close up. We have more awesome RV gadget installation videos coming up for more rides. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. What did you think of this system that we installed? Comment down below for our very next video. You can click right here.